He says, Jesus was the light, the pure light that came into the world and shone into the darkness. So Jesus, the word, is the pure light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do you see how that psalm and that passage in the gospel marry up? The word of God, Jesus, when we read and learn of Jesus, we understand better how we should live and what we should do. Now that's a one-two punch. The one punch is pray to God, take your worries to him with thanksgiving in your heart, expecting him to deal with those, and that gets you the peace of God. But he then says, live godly lives, do right, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, a lot of people would love to have the peace of God, but don't really want to have anything to do with the God of peace. Paul says it's a one-two punch. That as I interact with people today, even if it's at a social distance or via email or telephone or Zoom or however it may be, I want to be one who encourages people. I want to be one who points people to the Lord. And as I do that, those are words fitly spoken. They're apples of gold in settings of silver. What more could we hope to do today with our tongue and our mouth? So here's the deal. When I use the phrase cosmic karma, as I was teaching, I wasn't using it in the sense of some Hindu or, or um, uh, other type of Buddhist or Yanism or Taoism thought of reincarnation. That's only part of the, the karma concept. Karma is from karman, a, a Sanskrit word that just means an action and, and an intent sometimes and an effect of that action. What I was referencing as cosmic karma is that God has set this world up in a way where what you do has a reaction in your own life and your own destiny. You can call it cosmic karma or you can call it a principle of reciprocity, to use an English phrase. But either way, it's what Paul wrote to the Galatians. When Paul said in Galatians 6, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows in their life, that also will they reap. Same way. So when Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, Jesus is talking about those whose inner life, um, whose thinking, whose, whose mind is pure. Now, this radically changes things for me in understanding this verse. It means I want to be careful what I put in my mind. It means I want to be careful um, um, what I read, what I watch, what I listen to, all of the things that filter into your brain contribute to who you are and how you think. 